Hello everyone and welcome to another video by Elios Design Studio. In this video I'm going to be showing you how you're going to turn a photo like this into a digital painting just like this. We're going to be doing this using a software GIMP which is basically Photoshop but it's open source so you can do this for completely free. I've put the link to the GIMP website in the description so click that it will take you through to their home page and all you need to do is go on to download here, download the file onto your computer. Once you load it up, you'll get the screen like this. Now, if you've never seen this before, it is um, quite straightforward. You've got all your tools in the top left here where you can use the paintbrush, the pencil, the eraser. You can crop, you can rotate, you can scale images. Everything you can possibly imagine um, to do an image, you can do using the tools up here. Now, under each tool, there are different options. So for example, on this one, it's currently set to rotate. If I right click on it, then you'll have a load of different options and you can basically right click on each one, right click on the paintbrush. You can then load up the pencil, airbrush, ink, my paint brush. So we're mainly going to be focusing using these tools and also the layers tab, which is down the bottom here. This is where again, we're going to create multiple layers to edit our image and turn it into a digital painting. So the first thing you need to do is to load up the image. So find the image that you want to turn into a digital painting. And all you do is file, open, and then find the file. Now I'm going to be using this image. Um, do make sure it's a large image file as the quality won't be good. So for example, this one is 4,600 by 3,000 in pixels. So do find a large image. Um, if it's under you know, 1,500 pixels, then the quality of the digital painting just simply won't be as good. If you do have an image that you really do want to convert and the pixels aren't high enough, then there are websites. So just type in um, enhance image and there's a number of websites that will enhance your image for you. Now, once that's done, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the layers on the right hand side. So currently we only have one layer, which is the actual image we've just put on. But what we're going to do, we're going to double click on the text here and we're going to call this layer base. So just double click on it and then type in base. Next, if you hold control shift and D for Delta, and then it will make a copy of that layer. We're going to call this one blur because we're going to add a blur to the actual image on this layer. Once you've done that, make sure the blur layer is on top of the base layer. And then you're going to head to the top, make sure blur is selected. You don't want to be putting this on the base layer. Go up to filters and then go to blur and then go across to selective Gaussian blur. Now here we're going to change the blur radius to 15 and the max delta to 0.65. Once done, hit OK. Okay, next we're going to go down to the base layer, click on that, and then Control, Shift, and D again to copy it. Once copied, we're going to call this one Lines, as this is going to really bring out the lines in the image. Once done, then make sure this is um, clicked on, and then press the up arrow and make sure Lines is the top layer. Once that's done, go over to Filters on the top menu, go down to Edge Detect, and then go over to Neon, and we're going to change the radius to 3, and the intensity to 0.06. Once done, press OK. Next, we're going to go over to Colors, and we're going to go down to Invert, then back to Colors, and we're going to go over to Desaturate, and then over to Desaturate again. Just press OK here, you don't need to change anything. Go back to Colors, go to Brightness and Contrast, and you're going to change this to Brightness minus 10 and Contrast 40. Once done, press OK. And now we're going to go over to the mode. So the mode is above the layer section. Currently it's set to normal, but we're going to click on that and we're going to find multiply. Once that's done, we're going to click on the blur layer and again, control shift and D. Now we're going to call this one brushes. So double click into it and type in brushes as this is going to be our brushes layer. And just make sure the brushes layer is the second one below lines. Now we're going to head over to Colors on the top menu and go down to Invert. And now we're going to change the mode to Dodge. So find Dodge. And now we're going to be starting to paint onto the canvas. So you need to head over to the Tools and get the paintbrush. Just click, left click on the paintbrush. 
and we're going to find acrylic 01. It's already loaded up for me. Um, all you need to do is type in ACRY and it will come up. Make sure it's 01. Then change the opacity to around 10. It doesn't have to be exact, just around 10. Now make sure black is displaying as the foreground color. If it's not, just click on that color and just change it to black. Change the size of the brush. So for my canvas, I'm gonna have it about 750, which is a good size. So kind of that size in proportion to the actual image. And then you're gonna make sure track direction is on. So it's on for me. So go down to dynamics and there's a little button here to the left of dynamics. Click that and then find track direction in the list, which is second to the bottom and make sure that's activated. That will basically uh, change the brush um, every time you move the mouse or every time you click. And now all we're going to do is just start clicking into the image and we're just going to kind of focus around the couple on this one and just expand out a little bit and then just a little bit on the background if you click more than once on a particular location, then it will it will put more color onto it. But now we're going to change our brush and we're going to find texture hose 03. So double click on it, type in just TEX and it will come up. It's this one here, texture hose 3, that one. And we're going to change the brush size. I'm going to change it to yeah around that size, 522. And then we're going to change the opacity up to around 50. Once done, just click into the image, start painting onto it. Like so. Just around the image. And just kind of expand out. I'm going to lower the opacity as I get further out, just so it blends in more. And you're just going to keep doing that until you're satisfied with the image. Okay, that'll do for the demonstration. Now we're going to be adding a watercolor background onto the background of the image. So we're going to replace the white basically with a new background. So in the description, there's a link to my website where you'll be able to download this watercolor background for free. So simply click the link where it says watercolor background and you'll get a file, which is um, the one that we're going to place onto the back of the image now. So click that link, download it. Once you have, go to file and then open as layers and find that file. Once loaded up, it should appear like this. We're just going to change the size of that now so it's exactly the same size as our image. So we can see our image is 4608 by 3072 pixels. So if you click into the watercolor background, right click on it and then go to scale layer. Make sure this is not linked. So click that so it unlinks and the top one we're just going to type in 4608 and the bottom layer we're just going to type in 3072. Obviously with yours um, it will be a different size, so just do it um, in whatever size your image is. Once done, press scale, and now it will be exactly the same size. Now we're going to make sure we're clicked onto the watercolor background, and we're going to press the up arrow and make sure that's the top layer. And then we're simply going to go to mode, and then we're going to hit multiply. Now, as you can see, we've got a nice background, so it looks more like a canvas. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't and let me know why so that I can improve future videos. Please feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I really hope I'll see you in the next video.